Good morning and welcome to our today's webinar, Machining of EEG Mobility Transmission Components. My name is Heike Meyer and I welcome you out of the city Salach in Germany. Together with me in the studio today is Alexander Hello. Mohart. Yeah. Alexander Mohart will present you our newest gear cutting solutions from the company EMAG SU. Um, the company EMAG overtake the company SU in March 21 and since then EMAG is also capable to, to sell and produce thread wheel grinding machine, gear hopping machines and so on. As usual in, during our webinars, you, you have the chance to ask us directly questions via the chat function. So please use this function, asking questions if something is unclear. We try to answer all your questions during the, the session or afterwards. That's, that's for my side. Alex, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Heiko. Uh, also from my side, uh, good morning. Um, First, I want to um, tell you something over our product portfolio. Then I want to jump to the machines which are necessary for producing the parts for electrical uh, components. So um, a short overview over the hoving machines and then the generating running machines more in detail. Um, then we will look at the technology we are using on these machines. Um, so tracing topological, topological grinding and so on. And then afterwards, I will give you some examples what we have done and uh, then we will have an uh, outlook in the future um, and then the uh, webinar will, will end. So I will start here with our product portfolio, what we are uh, producing in IMAG SO. So these are hobbing machines, uh, vert uh, vertical hobbing machines. Uh, from the size 200 up to 900 and we have also milling machines uh, for uh, cutting sc uh, screws and uh, worms and, um, and rotors. Then we have the bearing machines, we have shaping machines in a size uh, between 200 and 1500 millimeter and then we have the shaving machines for the automotive industry and of course we have generating grinding and profile uh, grinding machines, uh, generating grinding more for uh, big batches and uh, the profile grinding machines are um, standard machines for external and internal grinding and of course also for, for special parts like worms or rotors or hydraulic pumps and, and so on. Um, so over uh, which kind of gear transmission we are talking, this is a typical electrical e-drive transmission with the ring gear input shaft and a pinion and the intermediate shaft. And uh, first I want to uh, say something to the, over the, uh, the machines we are using for this and I will start with the hobbing machines. So here we have um, these two kind of hobbing machines. Uh, this is uh, the smaller one up to a diameter of 220 and a module 5 and the bigger one uh, up to module 350 uh, up to a module 7 and uh, these machines can be automated with a ring loader and uh, on these machines we can use uh, Siemens or a Fana control um, to uh, do here the uh, to put here the data into the into the machine to run this process. On the grinding side, we have um, also two different models. G is staying for grinding and then afterwards the number is the maximum diameter we can produce on this uh, machine. So here the G160 is a high productive generation, generating machine uh, with a ship to ship time less than two seconds and it's up to, uh, uh, the module is uh, from one up to three. And the G250 is a machine with a maximum OD of 250 with a ship to ship time less than five seconds and the module range is between 0.5 and 7. All the grinding machines uh, are only available with the Siemens control. So first we started here with the uh, G160. The operator is staying here in this position. He has a swivelable uh, control panel and we are loading and unloading here from, from this side. We have here an automatic door and here you can see um, the, uh, how it looks inside the machine. We have here the NC controlled uh, oil nozzle, the direct driven table, the dressing unit and here is a part and we swivel this uh, grinding head in, in the 90 degree position to do the dressing. Um, also we have an um, automatic balance system here in the, in the spindle 
and we can use here uh, ceramic wheels uh, which we can dress from 275 up to 210 millimeter and um, this <coughs> um, and the grinding speed is 80 meter seconds and also we can use here standard dressing rolls with a um, 50 point, uh, 52 millimeter bore and of course this is uh, a Siemens control. Um, Alex, there is uh, the first question coming in. Um, which automations are available to integrate the machines into lines? Um, we are absolutely flexible. This is equal if we have a G160 or a G250. Um, so we can automate this with the um, with a bell conveyor combined with a robot so that we put also um, additional equipment in this uh, robot cell for example a spinning unit or a, a measurement system to mesh the distance between balls um, and also with a gantry loader or, or something like this we are able to to do the automation so we are absolutely flexible in this case yeah. so the machines you are capable to make unloading and loading by hand or you can integrate it as well in a line by robot or Yes. As, uh, in a, in a yes. robot cell and so on. So there we are really, really flexible. Yeah, yeah. when we uh, load by hands and we have to sw uh, switch button and the door opened automatically and so we can load by hands. This is uh, everything is here possible. Okay, thank you. Um, this G160 is, um, has a special architecture. So when you see here our, our grinding head, this has only three axes. So it's the Y and Z axis and the A axis. And what is missing on this machine is a tangential axis. We do here an interpolation between Z and X and um, can shift here the, the grinding wheel with, uh, with this uh, interpolation of these two axes. Um, and um, you see we didn't make the movement in X direction with the head. We are moving the two tables to the grinding wheel uh, um, to, to grind the, the parts. And you see this here on the, on the right side. Uh, the two spindles are located here on these uh, cast, uh, iron cast blocks. And uh, below these blocks are, are linear motors. And so we can drive these spindles uh, really fast to the to the grinding head and the maximum speed of these uh, linear motors is 30 meters per second. Um, so you see we didn't have here anywhere in this, um, in this uh, application here we see uh, two parallel spindle and also on this side um, the tangential axis with, which we didn't have in the grinding head. So it's not possible to have there anywhere. This is only um, interpolation between X and Z. So in this slide you can see uh, a conventional head. So here is the tangential axis, the y axis in this head. And here this is the uh, head of our G160. And you see here the big difference is that the um, uh, point from the A axis to the point of contact on the grinding wheel is on the conventional machine much bigger as it is on our G160. Um, the big advantage here uh, for, for this machine when we are uh, closer to the to the swiveling point is that you can see here in this picture this is a photo which we have made from a, from a gear surface and you see here with the um, on the conventional head we have here some ghost frequency uh, on this uh, on this uh, photo um, this is coming out uh, out of here the tangential axis and um, here on the G160 you see there are uh, not really ghost frequencies. Um, these are is a fine waveness in the surface, which is maybe one or two microns big. But these uh, fine waveness in the surface create noise in the in the gear um, in the gearbox, and so um, this solution is much better as it is when we have these tangential axes here in the grinding head. Alex, there is also um, a, a question. What are the disadvantages of this virtual tangential axis? Um, when, when you compare this uh, s uh, solution here on the G160 with the standard grinding head, um, there are really no disadvantages. There are only the advantage I've mentioned before, so that the uh, fine waveness is really on a poor level. And um, also from the maintenance side, this is an interesting uh, solution because we didn't have the, the tangential axis and in a, in a standard machine after some years you must change the tangential axis because of the wear and we didn't have this in our machine so uh, this is also an um, uh, advantage um, with this architecture in the machine. 
And also, I think what you do the shorter distance, the stiffness of the design is higher. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, also a point um, which you can see, of course, here in the, in the kind of, of uh, surface diagrams. Uh, the dynamic and mechanical stiffness if of this solution is, is much stiffer. Um, this has something to do that the space for these tangential axes is really, really poor um, in this grinding head. Is, um, around 100 millimeter so the the board screw and all this stuff is really really small and this makes it uh, so sensitive regarding this waviness on the on the surface okay thank you um, here is a short video you can see now we are this is a, p a small pinion which we are, are grinding on the g160 we do this in two passes and now you have seen the really short ship to ship time between the uh, x1 spindle here in the front and the x2 spindle in the back um, also what you can see is behind the the pinion there is the the meshing sensor so on each spindle there's a meshing sensor uh, to find the the gap uh, in the in the gear um, on the top you see our NC nozzle, um, this is working in two directions, so when, the, when we dress the wheel down, uh, the NC nozzle, uh, the cooling nozzle is following over the NC axis the, the diameter change, and in the spindle there's the automatic balance system uh, integrated. Um, for, for dressing, we are swiveling the head of 90 degrees and uh, drive here in the front to the, to the dresser. Now you have seen that we have closed these, these uh, sheet metal uh, before the, uh, the X1 axis. This is necessary when we opened in the back of the machine the, um, the door for the automation uh, so that no one is able to uh, go through the machine by hand and also we cover here the small area where, which is normally connected with, with oil. So you see no cable in the machine, uh, so it's very easy to clean the machine himself and it's, uh, we didn't have anywhere in the cable regarding these um, uh, ceramic and, and the material we cut off the gears in com combination with the oil is, is really aggressive uh, regarding cables and we didn't have anyone in this, in this uh, small working area. So coming back to the G250, to the bigger machine. So here the operator is staying in this position. We have the swivel bedding panel and this is here our loading and unloading door. So we can open this here automatically. Um, this machine can grind parts up to 250 millimeter. And um, here we have, uh, have uh, a grinding head with a tool arbor. Um, for example, we can use here different kinds of grinding wheel, dressable from 250 down to 170 or from 120 down to 50, so uh, to 90, sorry. Um, so we are more flexible regarding parts which have an interference. Uh, grinding wheel face with 180 and also here we can cut with 80 meter per second and the um, dressable wheel is a, has a standard uh, bore, so as standard dressing wheels can be used, and this machine has also a Siemens control. Um, here I've told you before that we are using here on the, on the grinding spindle and tool arbor, so we have on this side here where the motor located is uh, HSK cone 80, and on this side there is a cylindrical cylinder here on the on the tool arbor and we clamp this uh, with the hydraulic so this is absolutely stiff we can drive this uh, spindle with uh, 8500 or 12000 rpms and also the tool change uh, from the tool arbor is really really uh, fast on the table side you can see we have here these um, iron cast bed and here is the the tower with the also, also iron cast plate where the two spindles are located and in the 90 degree position there is the, the dresser. This unit here is in our machine really stiff because we have here under gripper under the table and we have a coupling which is going up and down to, um, to locate here the, the position for the spindle and for the dresser uh, coming from the, from the um, uh, below the table and uh, close this these coupling. Um, so this is a very stiff solution and uh, normally we have here a ship to ship time less than five seconds on this machine. Alex, there is a, a question regarding the process. I think we can do this during the video. Yeah. It is possible to check the process by monitoring 
for example, that you see crash monitoring or pre to check the pre-machining quality? Um, what we are doing, of course, when we when we bring the part in the machine, we do the meshing, and during the meshing, we are looking, of course, um, if the if the parts are have too many distortion from the from the heat treatment process. And when when this happened, we didn't grind this part because then we destroy the the grinding wheel, um, and so we didn't do this. Um, this is the the process we are we are normally checking when when the parts go in. Um, and theoretically, if if uh, if one gear is missing during the alignment or during the meshing, you find it out as well. Yeah. And then yeah. the part is identified as yeah. not okay part. Not okay and part, and will be will be moved out of, out of the machine. You know. Okay. Now we jump back here to the video. You see in the video at the moment we have done the dressing, and now going back to the spindle, and here we have two possibility with the meshing sensor. Uh, for companies who didn't have so much, uh, so big batches, we can put the meshing sensor on the um, NC controlled um, oil nozzle uh, so that we drive the, the meshing sensor with an oil nozzle to the machine, but it's also possible to have a meshing sensor in the loading and unloading area. Um, so um, this is also a, a, a really fast machine and um, also here you can find really no cable in the machine. Uh, the cleaning is very easy and also um, the same point as I mentioned before regarding where in the cable we didn't have this here because everything is covered under under steel and um, and it's uh, working for a long time. This is very important I think for this kind of process. Okay, let's jump to the technology. Um, we have uh, five different technologies. First I want to say something uh, regarding meshing, dressing, topological grinding, fine and polishing grinding and noise opti optimized grinding. First we jump to the meshing. Um, as I mentioned before, um, meshing is done on the G260 directly on the spindle so we can adjust these meshing sensor in the diameter and in the, in, 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 in the height. Um, and this meshing is, is done on the machine meantime parallel, uh, so no additional time is necessary for the, for the meshing. On the G G250, as you have seen before in the video, we have the two possibilities. Um, one is on the cooling nozzle, this is additive to the, to the main time. And um, then we have for uh, mass production, we have the possibility that the sensor is swiveling in and we can adjust them also in diameter and, and height here. And this is mean time parallel, of course. Now we come to the dressing. <coughs> Um, normally we use for these, um, these electrical components, we need, uh, we use uh, two types of dresser. One is a multi-rib dresser and the other one is the, is the full form roll. Um, with the multi-rib dresser we, are, uh, we can dress all the starts in the grinding wheel with, with one pass. Um, um, and this is the fastest one, of course. And with the full form roll, we drive through every start of the wheel and dress this wheel. This is always the two flank contact and also the tip of the grinding wheel will be dressed with these um, kind of, um, of dressing wheels. All the other dressing methods are, are capable on this machine, but it's not so important in this case because uh, we are talking here over mass production. This is here the, the dressing position in the G160, so the grinding head is swiveling uh, to 90 degrees, as you can see on the left picture, and then we do the dressing. Then uh, this was um, dressing for, for standard gears, and then we have also the dressing method for topological grinding. Here we use normally a full form roll, a standard full form roll, so nothing special for topological grinding. And we didn't uh, need any um, special mach or additional machine access for do the dressing. We do this all with the standard, with the standard access we have in the machine. And here you can see a picture of our of our grinding wheel. And for um, Topological grinding, we must drive through area in the grinding wheel. One for, for, um, for roughing and two here for finishing in this case. Um, so it's a little bit different to the, uh, to the normal process. Um, and um, so we have here sectors where we, shift, we, we are shifting through when we are grinding the, the workpiece. 
Um, but the dressing time here is the same as, as we have in the standard um, process. So you can see here, we need three and a half minutes for a three start wheel and we need five and a half minutes for a five start wheel. So there is um, no, um, no time different in between. So no special dressing disc is necessary and we have the same dressing time um, in our machine. But there is also a, a question how after how many work pieces or after how many grinding cycles the, the wheel should be dressed in yeah. general I think and then it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not so easy to say because this, this has something to do with, with the, the uh, module um, we have when you looked here on, on the, the picture uh, when you have, when we have a big pic uh, when we have a big module then it's only possible to have uh, one roughing and one finishing uh, area on the on the grinding wheel, but when the module is, is smaller, then we have one roughing and one uh, and two finishing uh, uh, um, uh, two f uh, finishing area on the on the grinding wheel, and when you have three of them, then you bring more parts out. But generally, you can say um, topological grinding. Um, the number of parts between dressing is lower as it is in the standard process because we are driving every time through the same same area and uh, so we have wear in this in this sector of the grinding wheel and when ff alpha and ff beta for example increase too much then we must dress again so generally um, the the grinding time and the dressing time is is the same on, in our machine um, but the number of parts is lower regarding to do the shifting although you cannot do so many, many so much shifting you know, as with a standard you know, in, in a standard on the standard uh, wheel we, we uh, do the roughing then shifting a little bit to the finishing pass and then when the second uh, workpiece come in we do the roughing in the same uh, area where we have done before the finishing pass and then shift a little bit and do the finishing pass again and so we are shifting through the through the wheel and the number of parts we get out here is, is higher as it is here. So well, it's to say number is not so easy. Maybe yeah. it's 30 percent less as it is in the standard process. Okay. Something like Thank this. Thank you, Alex. But this is why yeah. be careful with this. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, now I want to say something um, regarding topological grinding. Um, first, I want to start um, with some uh, cases for the twist. Um, this is relatively easy when you have a gear with the helic and with the crowning on the gear, then we have this generating grinding um, uh, twist. This has something to do that we are driving with the x-axis back and then we have this twist in the surface. And um, what is really bad uh, with twist, you can see here in the, in the left picture, um, normally when we are grinding a, a gear and a, in the gear shaft, for example, we have on both negative uh, twists. And you see this in this edge uh, here where the blue uh, circle is, is around. Um, in this area, the, the, uh, pr uh, the surface pressure is, is really high. And um, this creates, of course, uh, some, some wear. And um, there is also a negative thing uh, when, when two high points get together when, when the gear is running, this creates noise. And when we have now our twist compensation software and can swivel maybe one flank to the opposite, then the gears mesh really better together and this reduce um, also the noise. And um, so the, the uh, running in, it's, it's much better with this kind of compensation. And that's the reason why you find sometimes uh, the opposite twist or twist free, or maybe uh, when, we, when um, we have a gear which is turning only in one direction, that you have a, a one a modification on the left and the, and the other modification on the, on the left side. These are the reasons for this twist. So how does it work? So here you can see the grinding wheel we have seen before in the, in the dressing chart again. And here I um, moved a little bit out here, this, this kind of grinding wheel. And here we have our, our, um, our profile and we measure this in three different heights. And you can see we have here different pressure angle. And when we want to set the, when we want to grind this twist free, we must set this point in this direction and this point must coming out here to this, to this area. So what must we do? We must modify here the, the pressure angle and here the pressure angle. 
And we do this when we have um, a grinding wheel and when we are driving diagonals through the grinding wheel, then we can adjust here the, the pressure angle over this, this area which we are dressing for here, this, this kind of variation we can dress when we are driving diagonals through the, through the grinding wheel. And um, when we grind now with this angle in this position, we can move this point here to this one. And when we grind with this area here below uh, at the end of the gear, we move it in, in this position. And this makes us possible to make, um, uh, to reduce a, a twisted uh, surface or make some modification, as I mentioned before, the opposite twist, for example. Alex, <coughs> can I shortly disturb you? Yeah. <laughs> Because there is a, a question regarding the meshing, which you explained yeah. before. Does the meshing process use a, a gap sensor or a probe? Um, this is an inductive, normally it's an inductive sensor, uh, so that we are looking for the uh, edges of the, of the teeth which are coming in and checking these, these teeth and then um, try to set the grinding wheel in the middle so that we grind the um, the same stock from the uh, left and from the right flank. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, what I uh, want to say here, every, everything what you do here in, in profile direction with the twist, it's automatically happened also in the flank line, uh, in the lead, sorry. So what we are doing on our machine to compensate this and, and to, to operate these this twist grinding, this is relative easy. This is here a picture of our HMI in our, our machine. So you can see here a visualization. And here's the area where you can put the data in. And uh, we have now four possibilities to put in, in the machine. We can see the natural twist. We make it twist free or the opposite twist. Or we make the right and left flank different. And what the operator is doing when he wants to grind um, the first part, um, first he puts the data in and show on the screen, on the, in the visualization, the natural twist. Then he makes a choice what he wants to do. Maybe it's on the drawing. He wants to have this twist free. Then he chooses twist free. And then the machine calculates on the visualization what is coming out, out of the machine axis. He didn't have done anything. Uh, the part is still on the... Um, it's not ground, it's only the, the uh, result which is coming out of the, the axis in the machine. And then he can choose, oh, I want to correct one micron more in this direction and one micron more in this direction. And then he can calculate here the visualization again and then he see, okay, now it looks like um, as I want to have this, this gear. And then he's starting, started to grind the first gear, go to the measurement room and come back with his uh, inspection chart. And then he say, okay, um, I must do some corrections. And then I, he put here the data in for, for um, um, the profile in the, uh, uh, in the bottom, in the middle, and in the top of the gear, and corrects this data. And he can see this directly here on the screen in which direction he has, he has done the modification. So it's close to impossible to make corrections in the, in the wrong way. And then he grinds the second wheel. And after the second wheel, he's in quality um, and he has um, compensated. So it's also very easy for normal operator to, um, to uh, do here this process, topological, topological grinding on our machine. Alex, there is also a question regarding this twist. Why is grinding not always done with a twist compensation? Is not the twist always a bad, bad thing? Mm, this is a little bit coming from the past. In the past, it was impossible to do twist compensation on on, uh, on uh, generating grinding machine. And uh, in this case, uh, every time we choose a, a low uh, crowning um, uh, in the gear, so that the twist is really on a, on a poor level. Um, but here with the electrical um, components for these uh, gears, the noise behavior um, increase and also the quality increase. And so it will, it's much more in the, in the interest at the moment to do corrections with, with twist, as I mentioned before, regarding noise behavior or also the pressure on the flank uh, regarding the higher RPMs we have in these, in these uh, gearboxes. Okay, um, so it's 
um, most of the gears will be will be done um, with a normal normal cycle, um, but we see that the number of gears who will be grind with uh, topological uh, software are increasing. Um, it's uh, also clear that this is not for free because it took more time. We have talked before mm. uh, between the parts between dressing. So cycle time is the same, uh, dressing time is the same, but the number of parts is, uh, is less. So the, the process time uh, in total increase. Yeah? Uh, there's also this a question which matched to this, but all these software functions are, or these functions are possible on on the SU machines as well, not only on the G250 as well on the smaller G160 yeah, of course. or as well on the G400. Yes, of course, of yeah. course. So that's a software topic which is... You know, which is capable on all the machines we have for generating grinding. This is, uh, not, has nothing to do with the, with the G250. Um, this was only the, mach the last machine I've shown you, okay, but um, it's uh, absolutely for all the machines. And we can also update in installed base of these types in the, in, with these software functions? Yeah, it's only software. There is no additional access or something uh, like this uh, necessary, so it's, uh, it's possible to do this. Okay, thank you. So here's some, some examples. On the uh, left side, you can see always um, a me measurement chart with a, with a natural twist. And so here you can see um, all the lines are, are parallel in flank line and also in profile line and the highest point here are all on the same level. So it looks like that this is a good result for twist-free uh, grinding. For um, the opposite twist, um, this is uh, also um, um, uh, relative often done on these, uh, these kind of machines. Uh, you can see this is a measurement chart with this measured uh, 1000 to 1 and FF alpha and FF beta, for example, is here under 2 microns. So this is really a perfect result um, uh, for these uh, kind of gears. And also what we have is here, this is um, the measurement chart with a natural twist. And here we do uh, something different. So um, on this flank side, we produce here the opposite twist. On this side, we have twist free and also something in between we can, we can do, of course. Um, so um, when you have nothing to do this night, you can think over this, how does it work? When we drive with the dresser, with the two flank contact diagonals through the grinding wheel, um, that we can do this on one side in the opposite and on the, on the other side twist free with the two flank contact. How many axes um, must they're moving in the machine to get these results? Um, uh, for me, it's a little bit too much, but it's um, take uh, a lot of capacity from the, from the controller. And this is one of the reasons why we are using only Siemens because Siemens has this capacity to fulfill this uh, huge amount of, of uh, calculation in the machine. Alex, there is also one, one interesting question came up. Can, we, uh, can you accomplish all twist and, and BRS correction as well as a tip relief without purchasing a customer a customized dresser, so using the standard dresser? Yes, we can use this with the standard dresser. I think this is one of our big uh, advantages in, in the machine. You can use a standard dresser as you can use for the uh, for a standard wheel uh, with for this uh, twist control grinding. Okay, thank you for, for this. Okay, now we come to the next uh, point. This is uh, fine and polishing grinding. Um, first, I want to show you the, the difference between these, these two methods. Um, this has mainly to do with the, with the wheels we are using. For fine grinding, we use two ceramic wheels which are glued together. Um, the red one has, um, has a grid size of 80 and the white one of uh, uh, grid size 400. And on the right side, you can see a polishing grinding wheel. Uh, so we have a ceramic wheel which is uh, glued together with the, with the polishing wheel. Um, so here we have a uh, um, uh, 90 grid side for the, for the um, ceramic wheel and the polishing um, grain has a grain size of 220 millimeter. How does it work uh, in, the, in the process? Um, here with the fine grinding wheel, we make the roughing pass here, shift to the um, fine grind sector and do the, the finishing pass. And here we get an RR. Uh, 0.15 and RR on the other side is 
uh, 117. Um, so in, in mass production, we are really sure to produce gears under uh, 0.2 millimeter. And with the um, polishing wheel, it looks like this, that we first do a, a roughing pass here, shift a little bit to do a finishing pass, and then jumping here to the polishing area and to do the polishing stroke. So this uh, costs more time, of course, because we have a, a third pass in this machine, um, uh, comparison to the, to the standard process. And uh, sometimes I've heard the, the word mirror grinding, um, this is, uh, describes this process really perfect because the um, surfaces look like a mirror, so you can see the, the opposite flank um, uh, in the, in the uh, gear. And um, this is a big difference to the standard process uh, where the um, surface is light gray and you can see nothing, uh, which is on the opposite side uh, of the gear. Uh, also here you can get really fantastic results and also here RR is um, 0 0.1 and here it's 0 point, no, 0 0.12 and here it's 0 0.11. And um, so in mass production we are sure to produce here gears under an RR with uh, 0 0.15 um, in, in series production. Alex, that's a really interesting process and there are processes and that's the question. Can, there is a question came in, can we do fine and polishing grinding or can be done on, on one machine? Yes, but these are uh, two setups uh, because the, the grinding wheels are different, so we must remove the, the fine grinding wheel and uh, put the polishing grinding wheel in, but it's on the same machine. So when you have different uh, gears and you want to do with some fine grinding and with other polishing grindings, this is absolutely possible. So definitely. you can do it with the same machine, yep. depends only from the specs of yep. the gear, which process you select, fine or polishing grinding. Genau. Okay. That's correct. So, but what is really interesting in the polishing grinding, this is here a surface uh, measurement of a polished gear. And what you can see here, this is the roughness of the surface. And with the polishing grinding, we remove here the peaks uh, on, the, on the top of this um, measurement chart. And this makes this surface so, uh, so nice that we are talking over, over mirror grinding. But this has, uh, from the technical view, also a really important thing. Um, when you do the um, run-in uh, cycle with the gearbox, the, the peaks normally are uh, creating wear in the opposite flank. And when we cut off all these peaks here, um, then the run-in um, it's much better as it is in a, in a standard process. Um, so we can... Um, uh, have here, uh, we, we can send here a little bit more talk way over these gearboxes regarding this, this point. And also the noise behavior is, is really good and so we use this uh, for the electrical com components. So last, not, uh, the, the last uh, this, uh, techno technology point I want to show you is regarding nice optimized grinding and you see here um, a again, a picture of the surface of the, of the gear. And this is here the standard process. And you see that all the, the uh, texture here is parallel to the, to the axis of the gear. So when you have parallel texture in the machine and they are running together, this creates noise because they are uh, uh, parallel and this, this makes noise. And with the software, we uh, rotate this these, uh, texture a little bit and when when uh, there is a cross angle between the t texture from the gear and the, and the gear wheel, the, um, the noise behavior, it's, it's uh, much lower as it is in the, in the standard process. Um, what, you all, all can, what you also can see here, the texture is here going completely over the, over the complete flank line. And with this kind of, of shifting uh, strategy, um, we have here only this short uh, texture here on the on the surface, which reduces the noise, or which uh, has an influence on the noise behavior too. Alex, there is also a, a question, a process question. It is possible to combine polishing grinding and this noise optimized grinding. No, I think it's not necessary because the results which is coming out of the polishing grinding are so perfect um, that um, it's not necessary to, 
to put there another another software on this. Um, we didn't do this um, when we are uh, doing this um, polishing pro uh, process. Then it's uh, it's it's much better as it is here with the with the um, noise optimized uh, grinding software. Uh, so we didn't do this. Okay, thank you. Okay, coming back now to the uh, example I've I've told you before. So we have here this electrical uh, gearbox with the with the four parts: ring gear, input shaft, pinion, and intermediate shaft. And here are some some results um, we have done. Um, I have uh, I want to give you an example. Um, two parts uh, would be grind on a G250, and two parts, the smaller ones, are uh, produced on the G160. Um, all the parts are um, are in Dean four. And um, so here with the ring gear, we have a number of T's 88. Uh, the module is 2.1 pressure angle, 20 degree. Helix angle is 25 degrees. And we need here a floor to floor time from 96 seconds. Um, this means this is including the twist compensation and also the proportional dressing time uh, is included the floor to floor time. Uh, the grinding time himself is here um, 58 seconds. This is done on a G250. And here's the, the results. So you can see um, these are not really um, many, many um, uh, things uh, are modified. It's only a small crowning in, in profile and, uh, and uh, lead direction. So this is, I think, nothing, nothing special in this case. Um, the intermediate shaft um, is uh, ground on the G160. Um, number of T's 21, norm, uh, module is 2.1, pressure angle 20, helix angle 25 uh, degrees. And uh, here the floor to floor time is uh, 33 seconds and the grinding time is uh, 25 seconds. Uh, when you see here the modification, this is uh, the intermediate shaft is will be torque weight from from two directions. So we have here a lot of modification um, in the um, in the profile and in the lead direction. So it's uh, conicity combined with um, with the crowning here on this side and here in the profile here on this side. Um, this is something to do with the with the uh, movement in the part regarding the incoming torque weight. Alex, there is a, a question as well regarding the machine or regarding the process. Um, I think that's a, it's a little uh, misunderstanding. It, I think it's the question if the grinding wheel balanced. Yeah. So. Ah, okay. Um, yes, of course. We have in in every spindle there is a balancing system in the in the grinding spindle. Um, of course, when you um, he asks us something regarding the clamping fixture. Um, of course, we, we, we must have really precise uh, clamping fixtures in the machine when you want to have uh, this kind of quality. Um, everything must be on a on really high level. So the clamping fixture must be fine. The, the balancing must be fine. The dressing unit must be fine. And the stiffness of the machine must also good. And this creates only this kind of, of result at the end. Um, so there is... Um, it's absolutely necessary that there is in, in, in this complete machine clamping and, and tooling that there is a, a weak point because this destroys you this kind of, of quality you've, you've seen before. So, um, But in general, um, our grinding spindles, they are for normal thread wheel grinding, all the spindles have automatic balancing yes, of course. integrated. Yes, of yeah. course. That's okay. absolutely necessary for this project because when you stop the machine, the oil is going down in the in the uh, grinding wheel. And when you start again, uh, you must balance this, uh, this wheel again because then when you didn't do this, you have uh, some some remarks on the surface. Uh, looks like a, a ghost frequen frequency. So this is absolutely mandatory to have an, a balancing system in this in these machines. Yeah. And if I could hear um, add something regarding these samples which you show. Here is important that the input shaft and also the intermediate shaft, we can hop as well with horizontal machine from EMA Köpfer or all, all, all other, all the three M gears, we can, we are able to hop on vertical machines from our brand CLC. So there yes. also, you are flexible to in the selection yeah. of the right, right machine. Yes, of course. For the pre, pre hopping of these gears then later on. Huh? Yeah, okay. Okay, then I will go on here with the, with the, um, 
with the input shaft. So here we have a number of T's is 26, module 1.6, pressure angle 18.5 18 degrees and the helix angle of 23. Floor to floor time is 35 seconds uh, in 28 and we grinding time is 28 seconds and we have done this on a G160. And here the result is uh, is uh, really good and here we didn't have any modification it's only a small crowning in lead and in profile direction and you see also the measurement chart is really really close to perfect. Um, then when we uh, want to grind the pinion the pinion will be will be pressed on the intermediate shaft and then we grind this on the energy to 50 so here we have number of teeth is um, uh, 95 module 1.6 pressure angle 18.5 degrees helix angle 23 um, and the floor to floor time is uh, 46 seconds and the grinding time was uh, 39 seconds and this will be done on a G250. Um, here are also some modification on this part so you can see here a combination between uh, crowning and, uh, and um, in the helix direction and the, um, the profile is only with a big crowning. This has something to do with the, with the movement of this gear in the, in the gearbox. Okay, um, now I want to come back to um, a further development we have done. Uh, we have developed a machine which can uh, do dry grinding. Um, so it's absolutely not necessary to have here uh, cooling uh, oil on the machine. And uh, what you see here is that we have here a, 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 a grinding head, which is on one side we have a, a hopping spindle and on the other one we have the grinding spindle. And in the dry operation it's necessary that we um, uh, do instead of the, of the roughing pass, here the sky fobbing, because when we do want to do these um, this uh, roughing pass dry, all the parts will be burned like hell. They are black at the end. Um, so we uh, compensate this here with the sky fobbing and then we do the finishing pass here with the uh, with, uh, uh, ceramic wheel. Uh, so when, you, when we want to remove my, maybe 100 microns, so um, uh, a two-seat uh, part will come in. Um, after the, the heat treatment process, then we do the roughing pass here with the sky fob and we remove, for example, 90 microns here with the, with the hop. Um, and then we shift these uh, axes a little bit and then we do the finishing pass uh, with the machine. Uh, and uh, then the gear is, is ready. Um, why it makes sense to do this? Uh, it's very easy to say this has something to do with the cost. It's much cheaper to produce here a gear on this uh, uh, dry hopping machine as it is on a, on a wet machine. Um, I think the difference between uh, three and five cents uh, per part. Uh, one of the reasons is the less uh, footprint. Uh, normally the filtration unit in this machine is much bigger as the machine himself. And with the dry process, it's not necessary to have this. So we have only a vacuum system in the back, which is bringing the dust and the ships out of the machine. Um, the tooling costs um, and the uh, machining time is, is totally the same. Uh, okay, sometimes we, are, we need one second more or we have one second less uh, comparison to a, to a wet grinding process. And uh, also regarding the tool cost, I want to say something. Um, some of you will say, okay, now you have one tool more. It's here the, the sky fob and the machine. Yeah, that's correct. Um, but on the other hand, this is not the expensive tool in the machine. This is a dresser. And um, when we are using here this kind of grinding wheel only for the um, finishing operation, um, we didn't need, need the dre uh, use the dresser very open and when we do a, the dressing operation, we drive only one time through the, through the grinding wheel. Uh, comparison to a wet process where we are driving six, seven, eight, nine times through the grinding wheel to dress it again because here we have destroyed the, um, the profile form during, um, during the roughing process. Um, so, um, and this, this uh, lower cost in the, in the uh, dressing roll um, compensates the, the cost for the, for the uh, sky fob. So um, the tool costs are really similar here on this machine. 
Um, and what is really um, uh, um, not uh, what is uh, <coughs> and when you see in the um, uh, filtration system, you need uh, the most of the energy you need is for cooling down the oil and um, to get generate here the high pressure you need for the for the grinding process. And for this, you need 75% of the electrical energy in this filtration uh, unit. And of course, in a dry machine, uh, we didn't have this filtration uh, system. So we save uh, a lot of uh, energy consumption in the machine. And last but not least, uh, one of the important points is you always save the healthy of your, your employees. And I think this is also an important point. Um, now I want to show you a video. How does it work? So this is a view from the top uh, of the machine down to the process. So here you can see the, the hardened um, and uh, hop gear which is coming in. And first we do here the, the sky fobbing process. So we remove here 90% of the, of the uh, stock on the part. And then we go to the finishing pass and uh, grind the gear, uh, gear ready. This process with the finishing pass works only when you have a really short contact time and contact time is are here the RPMs uh, between uh, workpiece and, and grinding spindle. Um, and uh, also the amount of stock you remove must be very low. Um, so in this case uh, we are grinding around 10 microns. So um, the design of the hop is a little bit related to the parts. So also when we have a, a crowning, for example, we we cut also with the sky fob this crowning in the gear and then uh, remove the the, um, st uh, uh, the stock with the uh, grinding wheel. Um, okay. Alex, there is an interesting question regarding this dry process. How process safe is a dry process? How is the risk of a grinding burn? Um, first of all, this is a very constant process because this is the first process where we have a constant um, uh, stock removal in for the, before we do the finishing pass. Because after the hobbing, we have all the same same stock, and this is never changed over the the huge amount of parts. So in total, the quality was absolutely constant in this this process. Um, regarding um, burning, burning of parts is in a generating process. It's very important. It's equal if this is a dry or a wet process. And these machines uh, from our company have enough power to create this. Of course, uh, this is has some say, this is possible in a in a wet machine and also here in a dry machine. But here in the dry machine, we have a really good good solution. Um, when you see when we are doing here the sky fobbing, the temperature increase in the part is not so big. Uh, so we come in with the part maybe 20 degrees and we do sky fobbing and it's one, one, uh, it increases for one degree to 21. Um, this has something to do, we cut uh, with this hop uh, the parts out. We have big ships and the temperature will be transported out of the machine with the ships. Uh, but when we come to the grinding wheel, um, this has um, this is not cutting. This is pressing, press, uh, pressing, and remove material from the surface. So we have here a temperature increase up to 45 degrees. Um, and what we have seen, um, there is a relation between the spindle power we need in this machine uh, regarding to, to the temperature in the in the workpiece. And with this, we have a 100% process control because when we need too much spindle power in the in the grinding operation, then we switched off the machine because then is something happened which is not under under the control, and the risk of burning uh, increased very much. So this is the first generating machine which have a 100% process uh, control. Okay, and one more question: How we do how we deal with the grinding dust? Um, we have a vacuum system uh, for the big ships. We have a ship conveyor below here, this, this hop, and transport this to a, to a vacuum system. Um, and the vacuum uh, system is also uh, removing the dust out of the machine. And um, also to have a, um, a stable machine, we are sucking 
uh, through the machine bed in, in lines um, air from the, from the um, uh, factory through this machine so that this machine is also very stable. So this has uh, three different functions, remove the, the ship, remove the dust and is uh, looking for a temperature stable machine because we can um, when the when the temperature in the during the day increase, maybe in the morning we start with 20 degree, and uh, uh, after lunchtime it's um, uh, 30 degrees. Um, this makes not, brings us not really in trouble because when we are sucking these these um, uh, dust, uh, dust yeah. no, the the, the the normal air uh, from the hole through our machine, then it's stable, and when uh, the, the difference between the axes is uh, some microns more. This is not a problem because we can compensate this over the x-axis easily. And so this is also a stable machine over the day when the temperature is, is changing. So it's really a good machine to producing high, higher skilled, skilled quality parts. Yes, of course. Parts, yeah. Yeah. So but this is also... Um, also for uh, for our wet grinding machines, uh, the Chinese like, uh, especially the Chinese like our machines uh, very much because with our standard um, wet grinding machines, um, our FF alpha and our FF beta value are below two, two microns and they like this very much. So we have really big success in, in this, this countries regarding this point. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think I'm finished with this. Uh, so when there are additional questions, Thank you very much, Alex. So please, as well, use the, the possibility um, to ask more questions um, via this chat function. We, we then try to answer you the questions. There is the, the first question coming in. What are the differences of gears for e-mobility transmissions compared to conventional or classical transmissions? The, the big dis, uh, the big difference is that the RPMs in the e drives are are much higher as it is in a, in a standard gearbox, and um, higher RPMs create um, more noise. And uh, also, when you have a combustion engine, this engine makes makes so much noise that you didn't hear the gearbox. And in electrical car, uh, you hear only the gearbox. There is nothing else which is which is uh, reducing this uh, this uh, noise coming out of the gearbox, and so we must look uh, much more um, regarding the quality and the surface quality um, uh, of the gears as it is in a standard gearbox. That's that's a big difference between. Okay, and then and then one more question regarding the strategy. Which machine strategy would you choose for changing workpieces and batch sizes? Which grinding wheel strategy makes sense here? Mm, normally, this is not our, our choice because um, uh, normally we get a drawing from the from the customer and he choose which kind of process he want to want to produce, and we must try. Um, to get um, to to bring a good results out of the surface quality and the gear quality he wants. Um, so for electrical components, we can we see that um, most of the machines are uh, generating grinding with topo combined with topological grinding. Yeah. So and that's uh, the fact is the batch or the the quantities are high, and then you go with generating generating yeah. grinding yeah. and if you have prototypes or if you are a, a gearbox, industrial gearbox producer and you have perhaps only five parts of this okay, and then you, use this, then you can use profile grinding and yes, that's also a big advantage of our machines that our machines also are capable to do addressable profile grinding. Yeah. Yeah. On, so there we are really uh, flexible. And there is one more question regarding the quality or the, the surface quality. What are the differences um, between the surface finish between dry and wet grinding process? Is there some some dif difference or? No, I. No, I no definitely not. No, no. The um, that's the reason why we have, have choosing um, the same technology for the for the finishing pass. Um, here we we are much more open as it is in a in a in a, in a, um, a wet grinding machine uh, because here we have only a grinding wheel for the finishing pass, um, so the grid size um, can be lower. We have done 
a test for for quenched and tempered gear at the moment in, in our company where we bring a blank in cut it uh, soft here on the machine and then do the generating grinding the generating fine grinding and then afterwards the, the parts will be nitrided um, and here this was um, regarding uh, surface quality where I think the target was to be under RR 0.3 in this case with, with fine grinding and this was really fantastic. We are, we are absolutely under this, under this limit and the big advantage at this, uh, at this part here for the nitrided gear was that uh, we reduced the cost dramatically of this gear. I think it was in this case uh, 65 cent per, per part. Um, with with this kind of operation, so um, here we are a little bit more flexible as it is in a in a wet grinding machine where you must combine the roughing pass with the finishing pass, which is here not necessary in the in the dry grinding proce process because here we have only a finishing wheel. Alex, there is, uh, that's a question where you more or less answered already. How to handle soft work pieces? You you answered this already. Yeah. 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 And the question is also. Um, uh, Grinding from the solid here. I, I think I will answer um, Grinding from the solid for thread wheel grinding. That's another a process which we are doing Theoretically could be possible, but the costs are really high and the tool wheel So for this to grind okay. in the solid is profile grinding is a, is a, the better idea. Yeah, definitely. Okay Alex once again, thank you very much. Yeah, thank also, you. Um, gentlemen to you best regards to us and if you have any questions, please contact your local salesman. And if you are traveling to Europe, you are every time welcome to visit Emag in Salah or to get a better impression about the uh, Emag SU products. Visit us in Bologna um, to see our solutions. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And we look forward if you're joining in one of our next webinars. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye.